now, why do we forget? Why do we forget those dreams? Because I, I wake up and I am sure that I'm going to remember these dreams. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I remember. And I don't think I really remember them. I think what it is is very much like – you ever hear someone talk about a memory from a long time ago? I used to think that people actually remembered things from a long time ago. But now what I think is they remember remembering it. Mm. I think they remember talking about it. They remember how they described it. And then they sort of remember that and repeat it and in their mind convince themselves that that's what happened. Because I've heard people – tell stories about the past and they're they vary wildly from what is absolutely true like like factual you could check it you could research it you know what the facts are but in their mind it's very different and i think that it's entirely possible that what people are doing is remembering the recollection of these memories and how they told them and then also sort of people elaborate things and make themselves look better or make the situation look more dramatic but with dreams, that doesn't make any sense. So I was, I'm was i always trying to figure out, like, what is it about a dream where sometimes I can remember the dream? And sometimes it's so vivid when I wake up. I'm like, holy shit, that was crazy. What a dream. And then I forget it 20 minutes later. Right. What is that? So firstly, I mean, one theory of dreaming is that it's just simply a reconstruction when you wake up. So you have these fragments mm. of activity and what your cortex does when it wakes up is what your cortex is designed to do when you're awake normally, which is try to package everything and make a good story, make logical fit out of the world. That's one theory. I, I don't believe that, though. Um, your, your point is a really interesting one. Do I remember my dreams Um that doesn't necessarily mean I forget my dreams. And what I mean by that is accessibility versus availability. So if mm. you haven't had that experience where you've woken up, you thought, I was definitely dreaming. I can't quite grab it. You know, it just, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. And then two days later, you're in the shower, you sort of washing yourself, you see a bottle of shampoo, you see the label, and it just triggers the unlocking of that dream memory. And it sort of comes flooding back. Or mm. someone says something to you and you think, oh, that was the dream. Yeah. What that tells me as a brain scientist is that the memory is there, it's preserved, it's available. But what happens when most of the time when we wake up is that we lose the IP address to the memory. Oh. So it's present, but it's not consciously accessible. Available, not accessible. If that's true, what it means is that this type of information we know can have non-conscious impacts on our behavior all the time. There's great brain science about this non-conscious memory processing. It's possible that we store every one of our dreams. We just don't consciously have accessibility to it. But nevertheless, it's changing how we behave, how we feel each and every day. No evidence for it. It's a theory I'm still wanting to test. But that's possible too. And it's only that anecdote where I can think, I just don't remember the dream. I've forgotten it. I don't think that may be true. It may still be there. I just need to find the keys to sort of access that memory. What's stunning to me is how quickly the dream evaporates, the memory of the dream, in relation to uh, an actual experience. Like if we went outside and we saw some lady walk up to some guy and kick him in the balls, we'd be like, whoa, we would remember that. And that you need to be able to tell your friends, like, yeah, some lady just randomly walked up to some guy and kicked him in the balls. Like, we would remember that. And you would remember it 10 minutes later. You'd remember it an hour. You'd remember it yes, next day. You'd, you'd be telling your friends, yeah, she just walked right up to him. I remember it like it was yesterday because it was, right? Yeah. But a dream can be 10 minutes ago. And you wake up and, dude, it was King Kong and he was he was swinging from my ceiling and somehow or another he fit in the room, but the room got bigger and you, you have these crazy dreams and then 20 minutes later you forget all of it. Like what is happening there? So one, one current explanation is that the chemistry of the brain when you go into dream sleep is radically different. Yeah. So one of the chemicals called noradrenaline in the brain, which downstairs in the body, its sister chemical is called adrenaline noradrenaline actually plummets to the lowest levels. It's actually, it's a stress chemical in the brain. It's one of them that gets shut off during dream sleep, which is Even if remarkable. you're panicking, like what if you fall off a building? Well, what's interesting is that that chemical is low whilst you're having that dream. But when you wake up, 
from those and some people often wake up that's when you have the spike of noradrenaline so it's still low when you're in dream sleep but there's another chemical that goes in the opposite direction it's called acetylcholine it's the chemical that is actually um, altered in alzheimer's disease and these two chemicals will change essentially the input output direction of information flow into the memory centers of the brain centers. that makes sense because people take that as a nootropic they do yeah, yeah. that's actually an alpha brain um, when, when you take that, it's, it's been clinically proven to enhance memory, especially verbal memory and recollection of words and things like that. That's right. So that's happening while you're sleeping. Well, so you're in REM sleep. Yeah. But what may be happening are current models. If you sort of build these neural models to sort of mimic dreaming, it may be that during dreaming, it's principally about the outflow of information to generate dreams. And in fact, the chemical profile is oppositional to input, which is about saving. So it's about sort of pumping out information rather than committing information. And so when you come out of a dream sleep, you still get this sort of lingering after sort of taste of of chemistry, as it were, in the Mm. brain. That means that the dreaming brain is more programmed to be outputting a narrative and an experience rather than actually committing it to memory, which is the opposite direction, if that makes sense. 